And if Demel is the most famous pastry shop in Vienna, the Sacher Tort is easily, easily the most famous dessert, probably in India, uh, in um, all of Austria, but certainly in Vienna. The Hotel Sacher is located not that far from Demel's. It is, if Demel's was more or less down the street from the Imperial Palace, the Hotel Sacher was maybe another five to ten minute walk further away. And of course, the Sacher is synonymous with the famous cake. And here's a picture of the Sacher Cafe with the, uh, oddly enough, the soccer cake not being featured in this particular image. But here it is. So a few words about the cake are in order. What you see behind this illustration of the soccer tort is something from the Österreichisches Lebensmittelbuch. Now, this is an official government document which explains exactly what a soccer tort can be and what it cannot be. And if you do not follow every single rule in this uh, two-page uh, description, then you will, well, uh, you'll probably, you know, be closed down by the in Viennese police department. So why the soccer? Why does the soccer become Vienna's Calling card, if you will. The way I see it, it's kind of like an edible manifestation of this urban, turn of the century, cosmopolitan Vienna, kind of a cake equivalent of a sophisticated black cocktail dress. And to summarize the <laughs> bureaucratic description, it is, by law, a chocolate sponge cake. And on top of that, there is both an apricot glaze and a boiled chocolate glaze. The glaze, the chocolate glaze, is more like a fudge glaze. In other words, it really is just sugar, chocolate, and water. So that's the bureaucratic description. But I will read you a brief description um, from something called the Appetit Lexicons uh, from around the turn of the century. Sort of, uh, sort of a food encyclopedia written in German. They describe it in the following way. What is called a Sachertor is a chocolate cake of a higher order, distinguished from her companions by wearing beneath her lustrous chocolate gown and undergarment of apricot jam. The Sacher seems destined to preserve the name of its creator in the memory of generations to come, for it is a Viennese specialty, one of those sweet follies which found its way into the imperial city, a city of sweet abandon, which elsewhere can never be fully replicated. The soccer tort is imitated quite well by all of Vienna's confectioners and restaurants, but those enchanting, charmingly graceful originals made by Edward Socker's company are inimitable. On the tongue, it is pure poetry. No wonder that more than 20,000 are exported each year to the whole world. So keep in mind, this is written in 1894. The Hotel Soccer is exporting 20,000 cakes and shipping them all over the world. And this, I think, explains the soccer's popularity. So, of course, Vienna's most famous cake needs a dramatic origin story. Whether it's true or not, it all begins in the kitchens of the Chancellor Clemens von Metternich. Sort of the prime minister of the Habsburgs, Metternich became very, very famous for presiding over, yes, the Congress of Vienna and being kind of the lead actor in carving up Europe. And he was the prime minister for years and years and years. He finally lost his job in 1848 during the revolutions that swept Europe that year. But the story goes that Franz Sacher is apprenticed in the kitchens of Metternich. And Metternich has a few buddies over uh, around 1832. And young Franz Sacher whips up this cake, serves it to Metternich, and voila, history is made. 
So Franz is 15 years old at the time, so I'm not really convinced that he would have been making things for his boss. More likely the French pastry chef would have been doing those. But it is a good story. And it's a story that Franz Sacher's son, Edward, repeated time and time and over again. And here's the story as he tells it. Uh, some 50 years later, by the way. The soccer chart is an invention of my still-living father. He created the cake as a young apprentice chef in the kitchens of old Metternich, where my father had learned the culinary art. When he set it on the table 56 years ago, it was met with acclaim from the, those present and earned him much praise from the prince. So this is Edward Socher. And apparently this quotation comes from a letter that he sent to a newspaper which had mentioned all of Vienna's favorite and famous foods, but hadn't mentioned the soccer tour. So, of course, Edward was a little bit miffed. But there's a couple of problems with this story. First of all, that letter doesn't seem to exist anywhere. Nobody seems to have it. And it certainly did not appear in the newspaper, as the people at the soccer hotel say they are. And there's one other problem with the story, because there's an interview from Franz Sacher himself, or with Franz Sacher himself, uh, when he was in his, admittedly in his 80s, from 1906. And here, Franz Sacher explains that, no, he didn't invent the soccer cake when he was 15, he invented it about a decade later when he was running a catering company. And he happened to be running this catering company in Bratislava, what was then Pressburg, which is these days about a half an hour train ride from Vienna, but in those days was a lot farther, of course. But he ran this catering company. Initially, he was working for a casino, and then he had all of these clients all over what is now Slovakia. And many Americans in particular taste the cake and think, what's the big deal? To a lot of Americans, it seems a little bit dry and not really chocolate enough. But you have to think about a caterer in the 1840s because the soccer cake is the caterer's dream cake. Because of those double glazes, it keeps for days without refrigeration. And it's easy to transport. Remember the hotels sending them all over the world a few decades later, right? And to bring it back to life, you just need that big dollop of schlag, whipped cream. And without the whipped cream, the soccer tort is incomplete. So it's like that little cocktail dress without the pearl necklace, right? You need both. So why the story? Here, by the way, is a picture of Franz Sacher. And when he returned to Vienna, he opened up a catering operation, for lack of a better term. But it was um, a large shop that also had, you know, what we would call takeout today. But Edward, Edward started off in the restaurant business. And then soon enough, opened up a hotel, the Soccer Hotel. And by the time the story about the origin story of the Soccer Hotel comes about, Edward is running Vienna's most prestigious hotel, and the cake became, it became an effective marketing tool. It became a sort of edible calling card, a chocolatey advertisement that could be sent all around the world due to its remarkable durability. Remember that 20,000 cakes that were being sent? In other words, it was initially the hotel's calling card, its marketing tool, and it was definitely less famous than the hotel itself. But eventually, the cake becomes more famous than the hotel. And if you look particularly at late 19th century travel guides, they're telling you, you have to go to the soccer hotel. You have to go to the soccer hotel. Why? Because you have to try the soccer cake. 
Now, I haven't gotten the most recent numbers on this, but back in 2009, they are making 360,000 of these cakes. They're being made by 41 employees of the company's pastry kitchens, and they are being shipped around the world. And yes, you too can go to the web company's website, and I'm not getting a percentage. You can go to the company's website and order a soccer chart, and it will be delivered to you. Uh, by the way, there's also a soccer hotel in um, in Salzburg where you can try the cake as well, or you can go any one of a number of other places, including Damel, up the street. And you can certainly compare and contrast the two different cakes, and you can decide which one is better. Just don't forget the schlock.